I wanted to make the point that religion is not necessary to create a state, to control, to ensure that people are behaving. So, with that, welcome to the second episode of religion versus atheism. With religion, you have the very strict rules that, contrary to popular opinion, do change over time. If you look at any religion, you will see it has changed over time. It might have just been small, you know, minor adjustments, but Okay, just to cover myself here, I will say almost any religion has adjusted at least somewhat to changes that have later come about. Things that they've since realized. The thing is, when you write something down, it's it might be the best you know at the time, but it's not necessarily going to be the best always. You could be doing it wrong for a long time, and if you don't just sit down and accept, hey, this other way is actually better than what we've been doing, then you're just going to keep doing it the overly difficult way. And you hear a lot of people argue, you know, religious folk argue that you need to have some religious basis for any kind of government, for, you know, to be able to keep people from, I don't know, I don't know the specific details of what these people imagine will happen, but some something destructive, you know. But what you can see, if you actually look at secular society, Denmark is quite secular. We technically do have... I, th I think it's, it says a lot that we don't have separation, you know, of church and state. It's because... Basically, we don't need it. We haven't had religion dictating the way things should be for a long time. I'm not going to claim that all Danes live completely liberated from religion. There are pockets where it is, you know, a bad thing, and I could understand arguments for actually getting separation from church and state, you know, we we still have, you know, a royal family, but they don't make any decisions for us. They, it's kind of a joke, because our queen has to sign off on any law before it actually becomes, you know, the, the law, but she has to. There's not really any, it's not like she can say, nope, not going to do it. So, yeah. We have a secular society, and people behave. We have very little crime. I've heard somewhere that we are the happiest nation. I don't agree with that, but we are a very friendly people. We, you know, we, we do what we can to help those in need. We do have certain of the religious holidays, but I don't I don't know of anyone here that goes nuts over it, you know. People can behave just fine, even if they don't have a threat or a you know, an iron fist ruling over them.
if you just look at the way people behave, you know, we, we're going to be in groups. If, if there is no society, if just a group of people grow up, you know, in an isolated area, they're going to do what they can to still survive, to... Now, I mean, we're not the best at adapting to nature, but we can still, you know, gradually get accustomed to it, and we won't be killing each other, you know, there's no need for that commandment. Sorry, but there just isn't. It was written in a time where there was a lot of chaos, and maybe some people were killing each other for what the other people had. This doesn't mean that these were bad people. They were just desperate. They were afraid. Maybe it was the only way that they could survive. Maybe they thought it was the only way they could survive. But people aren't going to just be randomly killing other people just because they're not told not to. There are countries that basically don't have religion, that are secular, and you'll see that there aren't, there aren't necessarily higher crime rates or a lot of really bad things going on. The more free a society is to just let people be themselves, for people to just be themselves, the happier this society will be. You can look anywhere, you can look at any period in time, in history, and this will be the case. People aren't happy because they have a lot, or because they're famous, or crap like that. Look at what kings and rulers have done throughout the ages, when there wasn't a war on. Royalty have done the most bizarre things, and it's because they don't really have, they don't have any, you know, there, there isn't really anything for them to do. They aren't, they aren't being made to do something. People like to work. You don't have to threaten people, you know, to get them to work. Here in Denmark, it's been said that it's not worth it, that, you know, you can get by just fine without working, and yet people do work. There aren't a lot of people who are unemployed, and in general, just we do follow the rules. My father likes to point out that we follow the the golden rule, I believe it's called, Jesus' words of do unto others as you would have them do unto you, which I think he actually kind of stole from Buddha, but whatever. Yes, we do, and we don't need the rest of the religion to to do so. You don't need anything else. And and do unto others as, you know, be the way to others that you'd like them to be the way to you just makes sense. If you have a society where people are equal, where, where there isn't very much of special status, and where special status doesn't mean You know, where, where not having special status doesn't mean that you'll practically be dying, you know, that you'll barely be able to survive or something. People just generally behave nicely towards one another. And when they don't, it's not because they're not being threatened with death and torment, or because they think that there isn't 
you know, some being watching everything they do. That's a horrible, dark and outdated idea. Even children won't. I mean, granted, boundaries. Boundaries are necessary, but threats of horrible things happening generally just aren't necessary. You can't threaten someone out of committing a crime of passion. And as long as there are these boundaries, I mean, if you don't set boundaries, then the people will be seeking out these boundaries until they find them, you know, or they'll just keep breaking the boundaries. It should also be noted that a lot of the more extreme things that people are doing are a... It's, it's an overreaction to all the the repression that they have suffered under, you know. When, I mean, I'll, my theory on Matt, Matt Parker and Trey Stone, I believe their names are, South Park, Team America, those guys, is that they grew up and they weren't allowed to say any swear words. They weren't allowed to talk about sex. They weren't allowed to make fart jokes. So they grow up, they get their own show, and they do that as much as they possibly can. And it's because they've had all that energy just pent up and they just need to get it out, you know. That's what repression does. It, it doesn't take away anything. There's no such thing as taking away that energy. You can challenge, channel it, you know. But you can't take it away. If there is something that you really badly need, that your brain or your body tells you that you need, then you can't really, you know, get that away. You can lessen the amount that you need, and, you know, in the case of things that we don't naturally need, you know, drugs, you know, stuff like that, if you don't start on it, you know, you won't feel an urge to, you know. You might feel, like, stressed or anxious or something, but you can get rid of that in other ways, I would say. But basically, if you don't threaten people and you just set certain boundaries, boundaries that make sense, mind you, you know, don't rape, don't kill, stuff that actually makes sense. You know, for someone to actually be breaking these boundaries you almost need religion, you know? You need... or you need to, like, scare them. Big time. But other than that, these things just don't happen that much. And when they do happen, it's not because these people didn't have faith in a god, because religious people do rape and kill. Not all of them, I'm not saying that all of them do, but sometimes they do. And it just doesn't... if it doesn't deter, then what do you need it for, you know? If it doesn't actually work, then what's the point of scaring people? Basically, if you just make a rule that just makes sense and that people can challenge and change, democracies tend to not have revolutions, you know what I'm saying? It's, it, it just really doesn't, because why would you, really, you know, just vote, write, in, write a letter to the editor, blog about it, you know, go on YouTube. As long as you have the capacity to change the society that you're in, then you, 
you don't really need to be threatened to behave. As long as you have as many of your needs met as possible, I think our I'll try to translate, I usually hear it in Danish, but basically our ideal here in Denmark is few have few have too much and fewer too little. Basically everyone has what they need, not a ton more that they need, because what is the point of that? And almost no one goes without having their needs met. We don't always live up to it, but that is what we strive for. Not following some rules set in stone, but just help other people. If, if our constitution, if our entire concept of the way we run the country, the way our, our politicians run the country, if it was to be summed up in three words, it would be help other people, you know, heck, two, help people. Try to ensure that everyone has it good, you know. Unhappy people do not start wars, do not kill each other, other than like self-defense or similar extremes. You know, do, do not commit awful acts. I mean, unless, you're, unless you define awful acts as, you know, enjoying yourself, which I know some religious people do consider that to be horrible. It should also be noted, there are different ways of enjoying yourself. You know, you can enjoy yourself without bothering anyone else and without destroying anything, and, you know... But yeah, so, hope you enjoyed the episode. See you next time.